every Saturday morning, the sun-kissed drawers of California and Arizona present transcribed for boys and girls the thrilling adventures of Billy Swift, the boy detective. This week, the boy detective upholds law and justice high in the mountains. Jeff Buckley, a young mountaineer, has been mysteriously shot. Good morning, Sun Kissed Timers and members of the Sun Kissed Secret Service. Good morning, Ken Carpenter. Good morning, Bill Goodwin, and boys and girls. And of course, it's always good morning when you begin with a big glass of delicious, fresh, sun kissed orange juice. It has a keen taste that starts the day right. But more than that, it's helpful in keeping those three important training rules plenty of exercise, plenty of sleep, and plenty of good food. It helps you make the right kind of gains in height and weight, helps you build sturdy bones, helps you have strong, sound teeth, gives you a better appetite for other good foods. So be sure to start every day the right way with a big glass of delicious, fresh, sun kissed orange juice. And be sure to listen at the end of this program when Billy Swift tells you how to join the Sun Kissed Secret Service. So here we go for the 17th episode of The Boy Detective. Certain that his son Jeff has been murdered by Lem Cole, another young mountaineer, old John Buckley is determined that Cole shall be found and made to pay the penalty for his crime. Outside his cabin, Buckley, mounted on his horse, is preparing to join in the hunt for the murderer when he is halted by his daughter. Oh, where are you going? I reckon you knows where I'm going, Sally. Are you joining up with those men to hunt for Lem? Joining up? I'm a-leading them. We'll beat these hills till we find that cuss. Oh, Paul, if you do find him, promise you won't do aught to him. At least twice till he's had a chance to talk. I ain't promising nothing. Shame on you, Sally, for standing up for the cuss what killed your brother. He never done it, Paul. I knows he never done it. Hold on. Who's that yonder coming along the trail? What? See him? Coming along there on a horse. Oh, sure enough. I never seen him before. He's a foreigner. Yes, sir. Well, he ain't going no further in these hills out. I know who he is. I'm riding down there to stop him. Get him. I'm coming along too, Paul. Oh, oh. Yonder he comes, Paul. Hold up there. Where are you going? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Speak up. Where are you going? I'm going up to see Tom Wallace. What's the idea of poking that rifle at me? What's your business with Wallace? I don't know that it's any of your affair. Come on, let me buy. Stay where you be. We ain't allowing no foreigners in these mountains unless we know who they are and their business. All right. My name's Billy Swift. I'm spending a few days with Wallace to do some hunting and fishing. Does that satisfy you? Huh? I don't know you ain't alive. So you think I'm lying? All right, wait a minute. Here's a letter Wallace wrote me asking me to come up. Go ahead and read it. Show it to my gab. I ain't had no book liner. I allow it's all right, Paul. Else he wouldn't be aiming to show it to us. Why don't you leave him go on? Mm hmm? Well, go along with you then. But see you go right to Wallace's place. Don't worry, I will. Get up there, boy. Come on, get along. Hmm. Appears to me like Wallace be too busy to go a-having visiting folks. Well, being a furner himself, I allow he wants a furner for company once in a while. Huh? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, ain't this Pritchard coming? Howdy, folks. Howdy, Pritchard. Who's that yonder that just rid off? Oh, some foreigner is going in to visit Tom Wallace. Uh, so? Well, look here, Paul. He drafted something. Who? That boy. It's a card. Well, like there's not a fell out in his pocket when he took that letter out. And what did the printing say? It says, Billy Swift, detective. Detective? Detective? What does that mean? Means that there is business, I reckon. A detective's a fellow what tracks down thieves and murderers and the like. So that's what he is. Uh, he's come here to meddle in the affairs of us mountain folk. No, he ain't, Pritchard. Wallace invited him in to do some hunting and fishing. Ah, uh, that's so, Pritchard. He had a letter from Wallace. 
Well, got to be getting on. Williams is starting out to hunt for Lem Cole. You coming along, Pritchard? No, Buckley, I can't. I got other matters to tend to. <laughs> Later, in Tom Wallace's cabin. So old man Buckley stuffed you with a rifle, did he, Billy? I don't know if his name was Buckley, Tom, but... Well, he... you say the girl's name was Sally, so it must have been Buckley. Well, I'm not surprised. Do these mountaineers stop everybody like that? Generally, they do if they don't know you. They're fine people, Billy, but very independent. You see, they've lived in these hills since Revolutionary War days. They haven't had much contact with the outside world, and they don't want any. I see. They like to mind their own business and be let alone. That's why they... Keep their eyes open for furriners, as they call them. Well, in a way, you can't blame them. Would you like a cup of coffee, Billy? I can make some in a very few minutes. Oh, no, Tom, don't bother. What's oh, no trouble? No, really, I wouldn't care for any. You know, that rifle old Buckley had was the strangest-looking weapon I ever saw in my life. <laughs> well, chances are it was an old flintlock. A flintlock? Yes, Billy. The old-timers in this country still use them. A regular old flintlock musket that loads with a ramrod. Well, they mold their own bullets. Well, can you beat that? Yes, you've got to realize that you're stepping back about a hundred years when you come into these hills. You'd be surprised at the superstitions some of the older folks have. Yeah? Some of them still believe in witches, as a matter of fact. Is that right? Yes. Oh, and speaking of flintlocks, there's a legend to the effect that the only satisfactory way to kill a witch is with a silver bullet. You don't mean to say they actually shoot women they suspect of being witches. Well, no, it hasn't been done in recent years. But the belief about the witch bullet still hangs on. Well, I guess we've got a caller. Come in. Oh, hello, Sally. Howdy, Mr. Wallace. Howdy, Mr. Swift. I see as how you got here all right. Oh, you're the girl I met down on the trail. Yes. Yeah, sit down, Sally. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Looks like rain now. Well, is that so? Yeah, but I, I come anyhow. I, I just had to come. Well, see, Mr. Wallace, have you told Mr. Swift all about Liam? Why, no, I haven't, Sally. He just got here a little while ago. Don't you want him to know about Liam? Oh, yes, I sure do. That's why I come here. Mr. Swift, I... I ain't aiming to be forward. And I know you're a foreigner and all, but but I was a thinking you might help me out, being your detective. How do you know I'm a detective? In case you draft this card over at our place. Oh. But Sally, Billy came up here for a vacation, you know. Yes, I'm a known that. What's it all about, Tom? Well, day before yesterday, Sally's brother was killed, Billy. He was shot from ambush over near the coal cabin and died a few hours later. And there is saying Lim Cole done it, Mr. Swift, but he never, he couldn't have done it. The young Cole's the fellow Sally's been keeping company with. Oh, I see. We, we were going to get married, Mr. Swift, but, but now I reckon it can never be. You say they accuse Lim Cole of this crime? What do you mean by they? Oh, everybody. Paul, mostly. Paul and... And some of the men is out of hunting for Lem right now. Hunting for him? Yes, Billy. You see, right after the shooting, Lem disappeared. It's one after the shooting. He went away before the shooting. Well, now, Sally, I'm just telling Billy the story as I heard it. Maybe you've got a different version oh, of it. Oh, I sure have. Mr. Swift, Lem told me two days before the shooting that he was aiming to leave for a while because he couldn't stand Miss Millie no longer. He said he was going to hunt for a job someplace, so it's... He could take me out of the mountains after we was married. Who's Mrs. Millie? She or old woman would come to live with the Coles long before Lem's poor and more died. She ain't no blood kin of Lem's. She sure been making his life miserable because he was keeping company with me. You see, Billy, there's been bad feeling between the Coles and the Buckleys for years. And even though Millie isn't really a Cole, she hates the Buckleys just the same. I see. And I suppose the Buckleys haven't liked the idea of Lem going with Sally either. Uh, hardly. A few days before he was killed, Jeff threatened to get Lem if he didn't keep away from his sister. But that ain't no proof Lem shot him. Lem wouldn't kill my own blood brother, loving me the way he did. Uh, nevertheless, Sally, that's the reason folks think he shot him. Oh, Mr. Swift, can't you see it ain't true? Oh, if, if you'll only help me out, I'll be everlastingly bouncing to you. You mean you want me to prove that Lem's innocent? Yes, sir. It'll have to be done mighty quick, too. He might come back in these mountains most any time now and... And they'll string them up sure as you're born. Did they recover the bullet that killed your brother, Sally? Well, you'd have to ask Pritchard about that, Mr. Swift. He took care of Jeff after he was shot. Is Pritchard a doctor? Oh, he's the nearest thing to a doctor they've got around here. But if you ask me, he's a greedy, unscrupulous old skin flint. Yeah? And he makes these people give him the very clothes off their back in exchange for his quack medical services. Uh-oh. There comes your rain, Sally. Say, I'd better get my horse under shelter. Yes, I'll get my coat. No, sit still, Tom. I'll take care of it. 
Where can I put the horse? Well, there's a lean-to around back. You see my horse there, but uh, I'd better come with no, you. No, no, I've got my coat on. No use of our boat getting wet. Mr. Wallace, do you reckon he will help me out? Well, I don't know, Sally. You must remember it's pretty hard for an outsider to do any investigating in these mountains. Wasn't that a shot? Yes, it was. Billy! Billy! Here I am. We hear the shot. I'll see. It went right by my head. Look there where it hit the side of the cabin. I see who done it. Yonder he goes. Where? Heading into the timber on a horse. It's old man Pritchard. Pritchard? It certainly is, Billy. What would he be shooting at me for? He never saw me before in his life. Yes, he did. He seen you riding away from our place. Does he know I'm a detective? He was there when I picked up the card. Well, I guess he doesn't want a detective in these mountains. Uh, evidently not. Look, Sally, you bet I'll help you out. You go on home and wait. Tom, let's get our horses and go to Pritchard's place. I want to ask that guy a few questions. <laughs> Thirty minutes later, Billy and Tom are well on their way to the Pritchard cabin. I'm glad the rain's let up for a little while, Tom. Oh, so am I. We'll get some more of it, though. Oh, by the way, there's the coal cabin back there through the trees. Is that so? I didn't know we'd pass the coal place on the way to Pritchard's. Yes, yeah, right along here some places where Sally and Jeff were walking when Jeff was shot. Was Sally with him when he was shot? Oh, I guess she forgot to tell you about that. Let's stop here. I want to size up this place. Whoa, boy. Yeah, whoa, whoa easy. So that's where Lem and old Millie live. Yep. You can see how easy it would have been for Lem to shoot through a window and hit Jeff. Yeah, but I'm not so sure Lem did it, Tom. Well, neither am I. I'm just showing you one reason why the mountain people suspect you. Say, is that Millie over by that shed? Yes, it is. And by George, there's Pritchard, too. Yeah? See him standing there in the doorway of the shed? So that's Pritchard. What's he doing here, I wonder? Well, I don't know. Looks like he and Millie are having an argument about something. They certainly are. Gee, I wish we could take it in. Can't we ride around behind the place and get close to that shed? We can try, Billy. Come on, I'll show you the way. During this pause in our story, we hear from Ken Carpenter. You know, there are many delicious foods and many that are good for you. But it isn't often you find one that's both as delicious and healthful as sun-kissed oranges. A big sun-kissed orange is just the thing for dessert with your school lunch. It's a good thing for between meals eating in the morning or afternoon. Gives you quick energy, but doesn't spoil your appetite for lunch or dinner. Ask your mother. Now back to our story. Behind the underbrush near the shed, Billy and Tom listened to Pritchard and Millie talking. Well, it ain't gonna do you no good to take on about it. Oh, hate it. All I got to say to you, Pritchard, is that you're a scoundrel and a thief. That's about enough now. Well, yeah. You ain't going to be satisfied just taking my cow. Next thing I know, you'll be making me give you my chickens and hogs. Well, you'd be getting off lucky if I did. Now, get out of my way whilst I lead this cow out of here. Goes down the trail. Millie, this is Billy Swift, a friend of mine. Howdy. How do you do? We saw Pritchard leading your cow down the trail. Well, what about it? Oh, nothing. Only we were just wondering if you'd sold her. No, I ain't sold her. The cow's sick. He's taking her over to his place to give her some medicine. Well, couldn't he bring the medicine here? What business is it a yearn? What did you come here for, bringing that boy? Well, Harry, where'd he go? Here I am. Say, Tom, what's this thing here? Why, that's Millie's bullet mold, Billy. You keep away from there. I had an idea that's what it was. Get away from there. What business you got prowling around my cabin? Now, Millie, don't get so mad. Is that any way to treat company? I ain't a want of no company. I want you both to clear out. All right, let's go, Tom. Well, I guess we better. I hope you're in a better humor next time we call, Millie. Get out! Well, that's that. Did you hear what she said about the cow? Yeah, I did. She's afraid to tell the truth, Tom. 